Less than two, one, relations and functions. Uh, this is a chance to do some work on your own. See what you can fill in on the picture to the right. So I'm going to do it now. The x-axis and the y-axis. Axis, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. And the middle point is called the origin. Uh, we have two ways we can call these points. We can call them coordinates or ordered pairs. Whatever. So I'd like to pick a point in each quadrant. So I'll go uh, here. That's 3, 2. Here, negative 2, comma, 3. Here, negative 2, comma, negative 1. Here, 4, comma, negative 2. Get good at it. You should have seen this many times before. Make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, what do we call the x coordinates? Um, they actually have the words abscissa and ordinate and stuff like that, but we're not going there. All of them together, so that's plural, are called the domain. The y coordinates alone are called the range. So the domain maps to the range. Put an x into your system, a y pops out. That's what domain and range really means. So what's a relation? Well, it's just a set of any ordered pairs. Now, a function is a really big question, actually a fairly important one in the grand scheme of things. It's what I call a good model. And by that, I mean there are no setups in our points that we have one mapping to, say, zero, and then one mapping to two. That does not happen. And we're, we're using all this data to make models. So let's imagine we have a model for temperature given time of year. The model better give us a unique answer on August 27th. The temperature will average 81 degrees, not it'll average 81 degrees, or it might be 30 degrees. Who knows? That's a bad model, so it's not a function. A function is one that no matter what I put in, I get a unique answer out. I don't get two answers. I get one unique answer out. Now, that model I just gave you is not a one-to-one -one function. The one-to-one -one function is a unique output for each input. My weather model is not one-to-one. -one. Because on April 30th, might be 68 degrees, and on October 10th, it might also be 68 degrees. So unique one-to-one -one function means that each one spits out just one unique answer that does not pop up anywhere else. All linear functions are one-to-one. -one. Um, it's way too much to keep all that straight. So what you do is you graph it. And it turns out the simple way to test is what we call vertical line tests. This graph is not a function. Why not? Because it fails what we call the vertical line test. Put a vertical line, hits, in this case, three times. Hits two or more, it's not a function. And that's basically what I just said. That means I put in the number 10, and I got out 5, and I got also got out 8, and I also got out 12. So it's not a good model. It's not a function. Easy to remember the graph vertical line test, but try to understand what it means.
And remember, when you hear function, immediately jump to good model. A model where what I put in gives me a good answer out, not a bunch of answers that might conflict with each other. So, simplest way to graph things, I would say with slope, but most math teachers would say, oh, you do your table, which we'll do one or two times, and we'll get away from it as fast as we can. So you plug in negative 1, you get negative 1. Plug in 0, you get 1. Plug in 1, you get 3. Plug in 2, you get 5. Let's go to your coordinate plane and get used to doing this very quickly. Negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 5. There's our points. Little connect the dots, and there's our graph. Is it a function? Yes. Because vertical line test tells us it is. Now here's another one. We could just plug values in for y. See what we get out. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Put in 0, we get negative 2. Put in 1, we get negative 1. Put in 2, get 2. And then we can graph this. Now, even though I'm trying to do a quick and dirty plot, I have that dysfunction where I have to put my arrows on the end. Negative 1, 1. Negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, and 1, 2, 2. It looks like it's doing this. And I happen to know that it is because I've done this before. Is this a function? No. Not a function. So that's just a simple way to graph. Um, even simpler ways to use your calculator, which we'll talk about another time. Uh, we call this thing here the Cartesian coordinate plane. Uh, what's the dependent variable on that? And what's the independent variable? The independent variable is always the x variable. That's the number we always plug in. And the dependent variable is the y variable. That's the number we always get out, which is why you see it as y equals so often. y depends on x. x does not depend on y, generally speaking. What's the difference between y equals x squared and f of x equals x squared? Not much. This one's... A function because it's got an f of x, f standing for function, although we could write it as g of x. It just means that what we're working with is a function, but you treat it the same way. Um, a lot of students of mine just cross it out and write y because they're so used to it, but you get used to it. It's just called function notation. It means that the function f is a function of x. Simple enough. So, how do you evaluate a function? So, you got to plug in negative 3, so you'd get. Negative 3 squared plus 2 is 11. f of 1.2 is 3.44. 3z squared is 9z squared plus 2. That's about it. It's a lot of information, but most of you've seen before. Still in a little bit of a ticky-tacky land where we're trying to figure out the details of, of the mathematics we're going to do, but really not what I would call complex stuff. Good luck.